Hey guys, PG here, um, and today I wanted to do for you another review on another sword that I purchased just recently from Dark Sword Armory, uh, and that's going to be the one-handed Norman sword. Uh, so this is the second sword that I purchased for them. Uh, my first sword was a uh, 15th century hand and a half sword. Uh, I've done another review on that, um, and I was really, really impressed with it. It was the first sword that I bought, um, and to the, so impressed to the point that I, I, you know, I only waited a month before going back and and buying another one. Uh, and so I wanted to do something a little bit different than the first time around. And so I said, hey, I've got a, uh, a two-handed sword or hand and a half, uh, so I might as well balance it out with a one-handed sword. And so I started looking around, um, and I really got caught between uh, two different ones. And so it was this one and and uh, the, the Crusader sword, the one-handed sword. I, I just really like this traditional, um, this cross guard here, the the, uh, the crucifix look. Um, I don't know, I just in my head that that's, uh, that's kind of the look that I was going for, that's what I wanted. Um, and so again, I've been very impressed with this purchase this time around. So uh, let me kind of walk you through it. Um, two things though, uh, I, I ordered this sword, um, I, I ordered it a blunt blade and I ordered standard scabbard. Uh, um, and that was because last time uh, I asked for a sharpened blade and I didn't really get a sharpened blade. I had to go back and sharpen it myself. Um, and just standard scabbard, I figured I can, if I really want to get it on a belt, I can just buy a frog and, and frog, it's a, it's a technical term, right? You can buy a frog. I'll, I'll pretend that I know what I'm talking about. And if people are laughing at me, I'll just let that happen. But anyway, I just figured I can mount it to a belt if I wanted to. Um, and so I, I didn't want to pay the extra money for either sharpening service if I wasn't confident that I was going to get good uh, service for my money and I didn't want to pay for the extra uh, for the help but uh, I got this instead so the blade came sharp and I'll show that to you in just a second and they sent me um, the model with the sword belt attached and that's I wasn't expecting that at all so when I opened up the box and finally got through all of the um, <laughs> all of the cling wrap that they put on these suckers uh, I was just staring at them going maybe they made a mistake and if they did um, then I guess I'm grateful uh, and if they and if they did it out of kindness then I'm I'm incredibly impressed and, and, and again, grateful. Um, so uh, sheath quality is very good. You've got a little bit of wiggle in there, but again, um, I don't think that's a huge deal. It, it's got a firm grip on the, um, the top of the blade, so I don't feel like it's going to be going anywhere. It's just got that little bit of wiggle, so not a huge deal. Uh, I'm not going to take the belt off just because it's kind of a hassle to uh, take off and, and then rewrap, but again, really good quality. Uh, I really like how they've just actually interlaced the belt into the scabbard itself. I think that's really cool. Uh, when I first saw that, um, when I was first looking at Dark Sword Armory Swords, it, it made me want to spend the extra money for the upgraded uh, scabbard. I just, I just never did, so uh, I was very grateful to see and impressed to see that it came with this um, the scabbard. I don't know if that's a normal thing. I don't know if that happens to people from time to time, but uh, it happened to me, so I'm pretty happy about it. So let's show you the sword itself. So uh, again, this is the one-handed Norman sword, and I'll do my best to break down the specs for you as best I can. Uh, so it's 28 inches long from hilt to tip. It's got this really nice, uh, almost full-length fuller. Uh, it really lightens up the blade. It's got uh, just a wonderful geometry to it. And, and like I said, like when I was looking around at swords, I, I don't know, something about um, this style of hilt, uh, this cross guard, I just, I really liked the way that it looked. Uh, it just seems traditional to me. Uh, and of course, you know, they modeled it off um, the Bayou Tapestry. I think that's how you say it, Bayou Tapestry. Um, and even though it might not be a perfectly historical historically accurate recreation, it's still got that great look to it. And so I've been really impressed with it. Um, so as far as hilt, you have um, this wheel pommel. It's been hot peened. Uh, and you can just tell by the peen uh, that the tang is, is probably pretty thick in there. I don't know if they, um, with these ones, if they've got oak underneath this leather, um, but I, I guess they have to. But even still, you can tell that this uh, the tang on this thing's pretty beefy, uh, just by the peen um, and by the diameter of the hilt. Uh, it is kind of narrow. I got big hands, and so for me, it's a little bit of a loose grip. Um, but if I tighten down, uh, it's really not an issue. And I guess if you're swinging around, you're you're gonna be holding it tight. You're not gonna be holding it loose. Otherwise, you're gonna have swords flying everywhere. So again, handle construction. Um, I, it's it's either just cord wrapped around steel tang, uh, but I think there's oak under there. I think there's got to be. Um, and uh, whether that's oak or just the steel, there's cordage wrapped around that. Um, and then you've got some additional uh, wraps that uh, just once they put that leather over top of it, it creates a very firm, very 
uh, very grippy grip. I don't think uh, grippy is a technical term, but I'm going to use it, grippy grip. Um, so it comes with this great hilt construction and it really makes it so that you got you got a good grip on this thing even if um, even if you got big hands like me once you tighten up it's not going anywhere um, so as far as balance is concerned uh, it balances about six inches from the I'm gonna try and do this without flinging a sword into my lap but we'll see how I do it's about um, it's about six inches from the hilt uh, it's not a perfect balance but it's pretty close um, and so for me this feels like it's a little bit more front heavy than um, my my 15th century hand and a half sword, but because it's it's lighter, it's only uh, two point um, it's two pounds eight ounces, so it's a lot lighter than um, my my hand and a half sword, but it feels a little bit more front heavy. But I don't really mind that because um, you still got a lighter blade. You can still really swing this thing around without feeling like you're about to lose your arm at the elbow. Um, it's not too much weight, and the hilt, the pommel, balances everything up really nicely. So um, as far as how it was shipped to me and how it appeared to me when it, it first came out of the box, there was some rough spots. Uh, I took some really fine... Um, and when I say rust spots, I mean like oh, infinitesimal, hard to see, but I'm a little bit of perfectionist, so I was looking for them. Um, just if they were there, I wanted to take care of them. And so there were some small ones on the wheel pommel, uh, and I just took some steel wool to that, some really fine steel wool, and polished them out. Then I oiled it to make sure it wouldn't happen again. Um, and as I said before, the blade came sharp, and I wasn't expecting that at all. Uh, and when I say sharp, I mean like razor sharp, um, to the point where, I mean, if I take it across my thumbnail, it's taken quite a bit of uh, matter off there uh, to the point where I'm not going to do that again because uh, I, I really like my thumbnails the way they are, so I don't really want to lose one again. But um, I, it, one again, I, I don't know if I've lost thumbnails before. Maybe, possibly. I don't know. Maybe when I was kid, but not lately, so I just don't want to lose one now. Uh, but anyway, so the first one I ordered sharpened, and it came not sharp. I ordered this one not sharp at all and came super sharp, like crazy paper cutting thumb cutting sharp. Um, so maybe that's that's the secret. Maybe that you have to order them unsharpened and they come super sharpened. And if you order them sharpened, they come not sharpened. I don't know. Um, but regardless, uh, just uh, incredibly good edge on this. There's no secondary bevel. It's, uh, I think, what they call an apple seed edge. I don't know if that's a technical term, but that's something I've seen before. Um, but I know that it doesn't have a secondary bevel. It's a very clean edge. There were a few very small chips um, on this side of the blade, I'm not sure. I mean, it'll be very difficult to see, especially with camera quality, but there was some very, very, very small chips um, on this side, and that happens when you get a really good edge um, on really hard steel. So I know uh, they dual temper these. Um, the center is uh, 58, I think, hardened to 58 Rockwell, and the edge is 60. So it gives you this really good flex. I'm going to flex it, but it's a little bit shorter than my other sword, so it's got a little bit more resilience to it. Uh, but it's still got some really good flex to it, but the edge is going to be really tough. Um, and so the risk when you get your edge really tough, if you get a really fine edge on it, um, you can risk some cracks. It takes uh, a good balance of, of thickness to sharpness to, to prevent that from happening. So I'm not going to complain about that too much. I did a little bit of polishing and made those... Um, those a little bit less noticeable, and even so, uh, even though I'm kind of a perfectionist, I'm still happy with it. So, um, all in all, this is this is just a beautiful sword. I, I love the way it feels. I love the way it looks. Uh, even though it's a little front heavy, it's still got that really good balance. I mean, you could hold this like this all day. The balance is there. It's not heavy. Um, very impressed with the scabbard. Very impressed with the edge. Crazy impressed with the edge. Like uh, that's that's what I was hoping my first one was going to show up like, and and it comes in this. So, uh, I'm really happy about that. Uh, all in all, a great sword from Dark Sword Armory. Um, maybe not a hundred percent historically accurate recreation, but man, I just love the styling on that. It's got a bit of an octagonal um, round to uh, the the cross guard, and I, I think that's pretty classy too. So, um, all in all, another perfect uh, sword from Dark Sword, um, or you know, mostly perfect sword, uh, and with some really cool surprises thrown in there. So, uh, thank you, Dark Sword, for making such a great product. Um, I think I might even do some cutting reviews with this one, uh, and you know, probably go back and do some cutting re reviews with my uh, my 15th century hand and a half. I, I just don't have a whole lot of experience cutting, so this could go really well or really badly. But uh, stay tuned, and and we'll show you what this thing looks like when it's uh, doing what it's supposed to do. So thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope uh, you got some good information out of it. Thank you very much, guys.